Hello everybody, my name is Tris, this is Double O'Neill, and I am pleased to bring you this video. One thing that has been on my mind throughout building up the railway as I got to the Helix was how am I going to finish the Helix off, how am I going to make it look. So this week I've made some progress on it. The progress doesn't mean that it's been finished. Um, it's just step by step as I'm doing weekly, let's call it vlogs, I'll be giving you the step that I've done. Um, and it was a pleasure to do, very messy, but I don't know, it's looking like something now. I'm not sure how it's going to turn up, I think once we paint it up, put some grass on, it's going to look, yeah, maybe a bit more special than um my kind of thoughts were on it we always expect in our head our vision when we start making it to actually come out like it but sometimes it doesn't sometimes it looks better so we'll see how this comes out but what i'll do is i'll take you over to the loft and we'll just have a look at my kind of process of building it up and yeah and i'll see you back here in a second I think it's pretty self-explanatory what I'm up to here. I've got some wood glue. I like this one actually, the Gorilla Glue. It's not the glue necessarily itself that I like. It's the cap. It comes out so nicely. Um, whereas when I use the Bostic stuff, I think it is. Um, I always think it's Bosch, <laughs> but Bostic. You really squeeze in on that bottle to try and get it to come, and it just <laughs> it doesn't. So with this glue, works very nicely, and I'm just making the shape with a cardboard. I'll do it around the whole lot. I'm going to put newspaper in between, and then we'll end up putting plaster over the top with some water. It's all simple stuff. I won't keep talking. We'll just have some music on, and I'll see you um, back in my uh, my room. <laughs>
you have a better idea now of how that's going to be looking. I'm looking forward to painting it. I talked to my dad before about when he'd been doing some of his contours on his railway and he was using polyfiller and PVA glue as well as a little bit of paint to give it pigment. And what I'd like to do is add some black paint. I was going to mix a bit of brown or whatever with it, a bit of grey, and we can mix that with the polyfiller, paint it all over, and we'll end up having a lot of work done that I was, you know, when I did the initial stage, I put the bandage strips up of the plaster strip, <laughs> I forget that name. Um, and so where you have that, you get the little holes, and then you add the plaster to kind of give it texture and block up the holes, and then you've got to paint it and then weather it. It all takes a bit of time, and I was thinking maybe I can skip a step. If I get the plaster, I add the PVA glue, I add the paint, I put it on, and actually it might end up having the right kind of look to it, and then all I do is I weather it and I add some static grass and some shrubbery and I have some fun with it during that time. So we'll see how that works. That might be next week's episode or the week after, who knows? But at the same time of doing that, it makes you want to do a bit on the 009 layout that I've, I've been working on. I want to do some more bits of that as well, but we won't be talking about that on this episode. But what we will be talking about with the 009 is I had a comment from my father, as well as a comment from, I can't remember which YouTuber it was, I have to keep searching through. Uh, one of my subscribers, or even, no, I don't even know if they're my subscriber, um, wrote a comment to say that it'd be good to see a Toad Break fan. And a Toad Break fan in Great Western, always, is this lovely beauty. And uh, it's got a distinct look um, to the Great Western Railways. As far as I understand, unless there's uh, something else going on. And I wanted to make a 009 version of it. So shrinking proportions down and having some fun with it. So what we'll do is we'll go through the process of what I did there. And yeah, it's quite satisfying doing these things. Sometimes it can be stressful, but uh, we, we get them done in the end. And yeah, it's all really good fun. So. What we'll do is we'll go through that process and uh, I'll see you in a second. So this is the van. The toad van, the brake van that I've drawn up is based off the Great Western Railway um, brake van, which again, it was recommended to me by a uh, very <laughs> dear person to me, my father, as well as someone, um, one of the either subscriber or watcher, but they left a nice comment. You can see the detail I've added in on this, made a simple chassis, and uh, go through the process of then printing it afterwards. You can even see a little uh, chimney top on there. But this is the slicer software, as I've shown you before in previous episodes. Um, you can see the little supports that grow up. They connect up to the bottom of all the pieces. As you can see, I'm just going up and down so you can see it. And as it goes up, gradually, it the part, you know, forms. Um, every layer that happens gets UV cured. Uh, that's ultraviolet light. And as that's cured, um, you know, to a certain state it goes hard, we get it off and then I put it on the ultraviolet um, box that I built to then cure them properly. This was actually not my first attempt, it was kind of three attempts at all the parts. I think maybe two on the brake fan body, uh, but the roof was three attempts, it just, things didn't kind of work out quite right. It's like bowing, bits of information missed, so I just thought fine, but it's just soaking in isopropyl alcohol. And um, yeah, once it comes out, I give a little rub down. Um, I'll, well, actually, I put it in the IV um, box first to get that all hardened. Um, and then um, I just sand it off little areas. But you can see where you get the abnormalities on there. And you get um, issues that you can't really sand out. So maybe a better printer in future will be good for me. 
but there's the chassis got to pop the wheels on you'll notice something immediately that i broke off one of the bits when i was getting the support off because it was very brittle so what i do is use some green stuff in a bit and get that all sorted so that should be good and then there's my roof um, again one of them was perfect actually i snapped it trying to get off these supports i'm still learning it's one of those things that we can't all be perfect at but yeah, that's it together. Um, it looks alright to me. A slight bow still to the uh, the roof, but to be honest, once it's glued together and it's running around the track, I won't mind at all. And then the chassis it just clips in there. Well, it just squishes in, actually. It holds itself in, so I thought, well, let's just leave it like that. And that's our double gauge Great Western towed van. Looks very, well, brake van, sorry. <laughs> it looks good. It's got the similar look, but I've always liked the look of them. Um, and then we've got these little couplings there. All I'm going to do is just glue them in place. I left a little slot so you can just tuck in there, bit of super glue, and it will hold in place very, very nicely. And then obviously, do one for the other end. I bought these off eBay actually. I can't remember how much I paid for them. It might have been towards the £10 for 10 pairs or 5 pairs. Um, a bit more of the deer side, but. It's cheaper than buying the, um, I think the backroom ones, and it's a nice way of integrating them into the chassis. So this is the green stuff. Um, just mix it together till it turns green. Sticks to your fingers, so I recommend using a bit of water. Um, I've got very, very dry skin, as you can see in the picture, so it very much sticks to my hands. All this washing hands and staying safe stuff, so kind of wreaked havoc. And uh, I put a lot of moisturising cream on over the day, but it never quite get them up to scratch. But I have some couple of tools here. I manipulate the shape of the uh, green stuff to, to fix that area. It's very handy. And to scrape off anything I don't need. And yeah, after this is dried, obviously I'll uh, just give it a spray up and we'll go from there. You can see a little area that I fixed on there. But yeah, looks about right. I'm sure it could be better. And now all I'm going to do is paint my colours. Um, I'm using all the Real Match colours here, just a great western range, this is one of the stock brown colours. Um, it's very simple, um, you know, system to go by when you're trying to pick what you need for these. And I just paint the, the floor, because you might see that if you look closely. Paint the floor on the inside, because you might even see that if we're lucky. And after that, I don't know why, but this is one of my favourite parts, is when you see loads and loads of great western grey stock. Um, when you go to Dickert Railway, they have lots of freshly painted wagons and vans and all sorts. And in the sun, it looks really cool, especially with the Great Western sign attached to the side. As you've probably figured out, I'm a Great Western lover. <laughs> um, whereas um, there's obviously many other um, areas that you could support if you really wanted to, if you're getting into this. It's just something that I like from when I first got into it. And that's what my dad had, so I went with it. It looked cool and green with Great Western. Why not? So after I've done all this wonderful grey uh, colour, I will do a bit of weathered black from Rail Match on the um, axle area. But the next step will be to put the prefix um, transfers on. And these ones that I'll be using are from PC models. Um, they're their 4mm scale transfers, sheet 11, GWR, wagon and van insignia. And it's just the same as the other ones that I used. We place it in place. We then give some pressure with the finger to kind of fix it where you want it to. I'll give it a quick rub in this picture, but I've actually rubbed it more than that. Um, just make sure it's flat. And then I use a cotton bud with water on and I just prod it around um, until it ends up coming loose. What is the, the tissuey top layer? And then it works out all right check out my previous videos where i've actually done this kind of bit more of a guide to help you um but if you ever want me to recover these things in more detail each time if you don't mind or if you've not seen my other videos maybe i should cover these things in more detail i just don't want to to bore you all as you're watching so then i do the rest we got the w and then we get the other g and then we got the other w the hardest thing is working out to see if they're straight and after i've done them i actually gave them a coat of matte varnish um, this is um, some Great Western uh, matte varnish. I've also got some Vahalo um, matte varnish, which I ran over this afterwards, actually. Just gave it two coats to seal everything up and to take away any kind of sheen that's not wanted. Then I've got my um, roof. 
here. Um, I just I primed it white, just some Halfords white primer. But I wanted to give it a coat of white, <laughs> which looked almost identical. I've already given some brown work to underneath just to represent the wood panel. Um, but just finish off all the edges on the inside. And then we're just going to give it a good old paint, really. If I could do it again, I'd probably spray paint this one. So then it, everything's just smoother. But fine, it is what it is. So yeah, that's that really. Just got to touch up the uh, chimney top. I think I made it a little bit small, but hey, it's fine. I think it looks nice. But putting the two side by side, yeah, you can see the resemblance there. I just thought that would be enough for me. It's a bit of fun. I spent one or two nights just having a little sketch up on a computer software and off I went. So up into the loft, we we'll see our little prairie go past and um, with its nice coaches. And uh, yeah, just enjoy some running shots now of it. I had some fun, so enjoy. I like how it looks. Uh, let me know in the comments below. You know, let me know what you think of it all. For me, uh, the idea was great, but it was a bit more involved than I thought because the printer doesn't always print out the perfect prints, as I've already said. And I've seen some really nice printers that are coming into the industry which aren't super expensive. Okay, so they're they're kind of a price range I'm thinking maybe I'll get one of them when they come out um, Elegoo Saturn is one if you're interested in what I'm looking at and it does a large area with a 4k screen and the 4k means that we get more detail just like on a TV 4k normally means that there is more um, there to, to see if, if you've got a good enough eye to spot it and that's exactly what the print can do it can actually give you more detail and I find with my um, any photon any, any cubic photo, <laughs> any cubic photon. Just looking at it, it's just here. Um, yeah, that that it does a good job. But when I do the flat sides and build things up, you get more little lines. And apparently, that's something to do with the printer because I've played with loads of settings. And if you wanted to print a little miniature of a an orc or some kind of uh, like, you know warhammer based thing or you know tabletop miniatures because it's always on contour um you know with all the various shapes you don't spot it as much and that's what i've really noticed when you go through certain shapes you don't spot any of this kind of lining that builds up almost like where you see the extruded printers but fine anyway 
with that done, I just want to give you a quick update on my lights that I've been doing in the loft. So you saw um, on one of my previous episodes, I ran the lights that went back, um, you know, back and forth, that then made it look better. But what I found was on the lift out section, it was still a bit dark. So I wanted to put some light up there. So all I've done is I got some strip wood, and I think it was it's like a centimeter by 30 or something like that I had bits left over from doing projects and they're actually a bit warped so I had to um, clamp them together with basically two bananas that you're trying to make flat against each other and make an L shape and that actually worked out all right with glue let it dry it's got a slight bow into it but it doesn't matter it's just gonna get um, you know popped up above my head I'm not going to be staring at too much and you don't really spot the bow on it so the LED strip that I used before um, I've been asked about that I got mine off eBay and I also got some off Amazon it's around the 15 pound mark with the LED driver in a power supply so what I could do is in the um, description below uh, I'll put a link or two in there and you can have a little click on there um, I'm not affiliated, but I could always set that up. You could be helping out my channel. Um, but I was talking about helping me out with my channel. Um, I've set up a Patreon. So if you did feel like you wanted to support, you don't have to. I'm not going to start asking people for money. But if you felt you'd like to contribute in any way, click on the description below and you'll see uh, my Patreon. So the LED light worked out very, very well. Um, you've got the three strips in there. I used PVA glue actually to hold the connector, well, kind of the main bulk of connector and cable that is on there, um, in place. And what that worked out, I know really nicely, you didn't have to use epoxies or anything, you just put it in there. Um, I was just trying to find the words there. So that worked out very, very nicely. I put it up, the light on it was fantastic. It's You can't look at it with your eyes, it's so intense. So if you fancy doing a project like that, very, very easy. Things just stick together. You know, you don't even have to do my L shape. The L shape worked out nicely because I don't see the light. Um, and then you just run your cables down, get some cable ties and yeah, you'll be all right. So uh, anyway, that's basically it for me today. I haven't done a crazy amount though. Doing the plasterboard, not plasterboard, but the plaster mountain uh, with all the cardboard um, it just kept me very busy it took a bit of time that was um, two very long mornings on, on the weekend gone by um, so yeah I, I probably would if I did it again I don't know if I do it much different maybe I've seen people using Celotex that'd be pretty good I've seen Charlie and Chadwick um, as well as um, Kathy Millett she did a video this week a five minute guide on different ways of doing that for models so check those out um, from those two um, it's, I think that's what I do I'd use the Celotex next time it's basically like the house insulation and you can cut it to shape I would use that it's just getting hold of those materials at the moment is a bit tricky um, or having to wait outside wicks for about three hours on the queue I just use the stuff that I got for now but anyway, I'll leave you to it. It's been a pleasure talking to you all. Um, thanks for listening to me, as always. I will see you soon. Take care of yourself. And uh, 